so um, let's talk about translating your site, WordPress site with AI. Let's see quickly about me. Uh, that's me, an old photo. Uh, I work for uh, Undergo Systems company. Uh, you probably know us by our plugin WML for translating your site and toolset. Uh, as Milan said, I live in Slovenia with my family, my uh, wife and my daughter, Gloria. Hi, Gloria, if you're watching. Um, and what I do is I lead a content team. So everything uh, uh, f with writing like announcements, uh, technical documentation, um, uh, you know, every, uh, partnership articles, everything that's content, that's my team. And obviously when we talk about AI and all the hype today, this is something that interests me, right? So um, let's start um, about AI translations today, okay? To tell you about what I think about AI translations today, I need to go three years back when I was first really, really kind of uh, blown away by AI translations. Uh, there's this site I uh, o o often visit. It's fubis.net. I don't know if you heard about it. It's about like art, photography, digital art. So I came up upon an article with great photos. It, it's nice, but it's in French. I don't speak French. So Chrome tells me like, do you want me to translate this page for you? And I said, sure. And it does, and it's just like great. It's like talking about art, which is not always an easy you know, topic, not always easy language, and it was great. And this was three years ago. So now I just took, this is not the text I saw that day, but I just wanted to show you. So this is in French, or as they say, it's all Greek to me. So, you know, um, let me just read you one sentence, the first sentence. How to recreate in a scenographic exhibition the unique atmosphere that reigns in the masterpieces of filmmaker Stanley Kubrick. Pretty nice. I don't know, if I wrote that in English, I would be kind of proud. It's nice. Okay, so that's my point. That's kind of like, that was three years ago that I was blown away and we've gone so far from there. And with ChatGPT and everything going on, you can only imagine where we are today. So how does it work? I wanted to tell you like all about it, but it's really complex and uh, uh, it can get very technical and you could actually have a whole talk about how AI translations and AI works in general, maybe even five talks. So just very generally, um, uh, it's, it's like neural networks learning from vast amount of language data and finding kind of um, uh, statistical uh, probabilities of like what comes next and that's how it works in essence uh, there are tons of articles today so if you you're into this just google it you'll find uh, tons of it but language is complex so um, you know it, it's it's uh, it's hard to predict everything right um, so the thing is today for what we usually do uh, like the sites we build as, at least in my experience and from my colleagues and friends, like AI translations today are great. They will cover you completely, you know? There are exceptions, of course, like science and medicine and, you know, law, like that's all that kind of has their own like uh, intricacies. So there you would probably want something human, like a human review, okay? Now, my opinion is like, I can talk to you about how AI translations are great for like whole two days and it doesn't matter unless there's a why, okay? And you need a why, like why would you do it, okay? So here's me trying to kind of tell you why, in my opinion, okay? The obvious why is like reach your larger audience, okay? So, you know, if you translate to, you're from a, com uh, from a country that has like 10 million people, Maybe you can translate to a bigger audience, 100 million people. People are proven by like science research that they prefer buying and shelling out cash in their own language, okay? So it conver conversions and sales are better. You get better SEO because now you're not ranking only in like your language or the default language, you're ranking in more languages. So that's better for you, of course. And you boost your brand awareness because if you're present in a company, uh, sorry, in a country that, you know, you're not translated to, you're, it doesn't make sense. Like imagine here in Greece having like, I don't know, Microsoft without being translated to Greek. It's kind of weird, right? It, it wouldn't work at all. And of course, user experience is better. It's, it's definitely better. Uh, 
most of the people prefer doing stuff in their own native language, so it makes sense. But in practice, okay, the why in practice. So this is where I live now, uh, in Slovenia. So Slovenia is a beautiful country uh, that has two million people, okay? So that's one million less than Athens, the whole like city, you know? So it's, it's a small country uh, like with, with not too many people. So how do we reach more people? By translation, okay? So let's add Croatia. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned I'm originally from Croatia. So I translate my site to Croatian. Now I'm from two to six million. Hungarian, 16 million plus, plus Austria. They speak German, so I put 25 million, but actually many more million of people speak German, so it's more. And Italy, 84 million. So we went from 2 million in Slovenia to just neighboring countries to translate to, and we can now reach 84 million people. Of course, you don't reach them all, like, like anything else, but you have a much larger pool of people, much larger audience to you know, work with. Okay? And finally, it's not only about uh, just translating. So uh, when you reach to other markets, for example, I'll stick with my kind of uh, example. I'm from Croatia, I now live for a long time in Slovenia, and uh, I know both countries, I have my networks, I have my friends, you know. But even with all of this, if I want to expand my company to Croatia from Slovenia, if I don't translate it to uh, Croatian, it doesn't make sense, it won't work. It, no matter my network, no matter my reach, and no matter the fact that we used to be in the same country, we used to be in Yugoslavia together, and our languages are both Slavic, similar, but also pretty different, okay? And another part of this why that I would like to share is why AI translations, because you can use human translation, you can do it yourself. But AI translations today are super fast, super affordable, and super accurate. So that's that part of the why. Now, how do we do it in WordPress? Because we're here all uh, into WordPress, right? So how do we use AI uh, to translate our WordPress sites? You need two things. First, you need to decide which engine you want to use, okay? There are a lot of options there. I'll mention them. And then you need a plugin because, as you know, WordPress Core doesn't have multilingual features yet. I will touch upon that in my last slide. Uh, so let's choose the translation engine first. We won't choose. I will just tell you about it. Deeple, Google Translate, Microsoft Azure. Uh, you have Amazon and a bunch of other options, okay? And the thing is, they are all great, really. So there are tiny differences, like between some language pairs and like, uh, you know, but they are really good. Uh, so you choose from what you need, but in my experience and kind of our experience as a company who do stuff related to translations, DeepL has the edge, okay? It's, it's, it, it's leading the pack a bit, okay? But it's not like a, by a big margin, but I would choose DeepL. And then you need to choose a multilingual plugin, so you know what I would suggest there. there. <laughs> but um, so you have options. That's, I think that's great. Like you have options. You're not stuck with like one or two solutions. There are multiple solutions there. So you have WPML, you have Wiglot, GTranslate, TranslatePress, uh, Pol Polylang. You know there are a lot of options. Okay. So how do you choose? My uh, suggestion is think about what you need. Okay. I know pricing is uh, important to everyone, myself included, but don't let it like uh, uh, kind of only that to guide you, because look for what you need, really. So first, does it uh, uh, support the, the engine you want to, to use? Be careful, because not all of the plugins support all of the uh, engines, you know. So if you want a specific one, be sure it's that. Translation management, it sounds a bit abstract, but it's actually very simple and very important. What can you do with your translations? Can you send them to not just AI, but to other people, to your friends, to reviewers? Like, this is important. You may not know it once you decide to start building a multilingual site, but with a bit of kind of uh, research online, you will know what I mean. And then we come to pricing, which I mentioned. 
And there are two prices, of course, plugin and AI translations. So be careful because some options start free, but if you want some very basic um, kind of uh, features, it kind of adds up and then you're kind of in the very expensive area. And finally, do you need a human review? It depends. It depends, but like uh, many, uh, many people do want it. So, you know, if that's important, definitely look which plugins allow you to review and edit AI translations. Again, not all of them do. So, how does it actually look like? Of course, it depends on what plugin you use. So, this is from WPML. As you can see, it's very simple. It's like a, a dashboard. Um, and this mode that, that is on the, um, on the screenshot is actually where WPML takes care of everything. It translates in the background all the posts, all the, all the pages, whatever you tell it to. And when you add, edit, it just works, okay? Uh, but you don't need to use WPML or other plugins like that. You can also uh, tell it, no, I just want to translate this and this and this and this, you know, and be in charge of what goes on. This is, for example, for Translate Press. Uh, you can see like translation, uh, the English original language on the left side and the translation on the right. Um, and uh, most of the plugins allow you to edit translations, but not all. So be careful there, okay? And also, if you need a full-blown translation editor, which I very much suggest that you kind of go with a solution that has it, it will help you a lot because it saves time. It's, it's kind of like a translation tool for you. It has a glossary and stuff. Um, and this is the question. So how do we get it reviewed? Be careful <laughs> because not all, all of them allow you to do this. Like uh, there are plugins that allow you like, okay, you can edit the translation by yourself. Okay, but like if we take that site, for example, I don't speak French, so how can I review French language? So obviously I need to invite someone. It can be like a user, a friend. So this is what I would definitely keep in mind when, when going uh, with like translating your site with AI. And so here's the point. But it's not all about websites uh, because uh, we are WordPress community. We do many more things. So we build teams, teams for clients, teams for the ecosystem. We will build plugins also for clients. We build plugins for, uh, for everyone, you know, free, freemium, premium, whatever. So how do we translate it? And I can tell you from our experience, we have been translating our own plugins for years, and it's a pain in the behind and um, and it's super expensive like we, we went the professional translation route and it's thousands of dollars it takes time it's you know it's just like complicated okay so um, what I want to just like um, mention here today is that we built a free tool for everyone uh, on this site ptc.wpl.org uh, and it's free and it will stay free. And it, this is the first iteration that we wanted to share with the community. Uh, and uh, please, if, you, if you're into this, if you need this to translate your team plugin, you know, use it and let us know, uh, you know, your thoughts, feature requests, whatever, because this is the first iteration. We are already working on better stuff like for it. Um, there will be like uh, something premium later, but this stays free, and we are already starting to use it for ourselves, and it's really nice. So this is what I uh, wholeheartedly suggest, and let me know how it goes. So in the end, what's the future of multilingual uh, WordPress? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> that's the thing. So G Gutenberg phase four promises these multilingual, multilingual features, uh, I, if any, I don't know what's, what's being discussed, what's, uh, what's uh, being decided. Probably not too much yet because we still have like phase three, you know, so it's, it's some time away. Uh, so it will take a bit of time. Um, but um, by the fact that Jetpack just released um, an AI assistant in their own plugin, I have a feeling that multilingual phase of uh, WordPress will and should definitely include some sort of AI 
integration because it's the only logical thing and I'm sure that like uh, people who will be working on it will um, you know they will they will they will know what to do so but it's for us to see how it goes and uh, I'll be happy to to you know if anyone knows more please let me know so that's it thank you very much